Hey guys, it's Kristen of K-Stikes Designs. Welcome back to my channel. I was asked to participate in a photo shoot about a week ago. So I'm going to pull my relaxer ahead a couple weeks and I'm going to relax at 12 weeks instead of that 14 to 16 week window. I really just don't want a stylist to have to struggle with my new growth. This shoot is for a product and the end result could very well be anywhere on a billboard, in a store, on a product and I want to be as sleek as possible. This relaxer update, I figured why not also share how I prep for a photo shoot with all of you. Thank you for joining me and continuing to support me. Be sure to like, comment, save, share, and subscribe. Let's get started. Although I'm a couple weeks early, the new growth is still very real. My hair is standing up off of my head. First, I'm gonna line the edges of my hairline with Vaseline. This protects my skin from being burned by the relaxer. I'm gonna split my hair into the famous four quadrants. And if you have a lot of hair like me, I also tend to split the ones in the back in half again. Then coat the length of my hair with a product called Rue Porosity Control and Grease. When you rinse a relaxer out of your hair, small bits of relaxer are deposited onto the hair shaft, so this prevents relaxer runoff damage. I apply a little Rue Porosity Control, grease, and then twist. I create these twists in each part to help me relax a little faster. Pre-parted sections speed up the relaxer application process and help you to self-relax. You won't have to waste time figuring out how much hair to section off as you relax because you already did that ahead of time. I create about eight twists in the front and about 12 in the back. I'm using the ORS Lye Relaxer in Normal. I typically mix in an oil, but because I have a good amount of product buildup, I'm actually not going to this time. Luckily, I did apply a protein conditioner last week. However, I did not do a clarifying wash. The week before my relaxer, I prefer to clarify and apply a protein treatment. A clarifying wash removes buildup. This helps the relaxer process correctly. The protein treatment gives your hair strength to build it up to prepare for a chemical process. I self-relax and this time around I wanted to be sure that I gave you a good view of how I relax the back. It is possible. I'm using a handheld mirror to check the back and there's also a full length mirror in front of me in addition to the playback from the camera. My hair is more coarse in the back, so I always start there first. I hold up my mirror and I see a little black in these areas. No, 
problem at all, let's just take a little relaxer and fill in those holes. The black hair that did not have any relaxer on it is now covered. Right as I got to the front, my alarm goes off. Although I'm relaxed, I prefer to leave a little texture in my hair, so my typical goal is to relax for about 15 to 16 minutes. At 12 minutes, I'm typically done and smoothing. However, I mean, one, it is what it is. At 12 minutes, I wasn't done, so today it's gonna process a little longer. And secondly, Remember I said I had some product buildup. I didn't know that I was gonna get a relaxer this week, so I've definitely been over moisturizing my new growth to ensure there's no breakage. So since there's more product in my hair, plus I didn't have the opportunity to clarify, so a few extra minutes is actually a smart move. I'd estimate I let the relaxer sit for about 20 minutes this time around. Next, we're gonna rinse really, really well, and then I'm gonna use a neutralizing shampoo. I'll wash with this shampoo one time, and then I'll wash with it three more times, and let it sit each time to ensure the relaxer has been removed from my hair. Here are our results. Just how I like it. It is soft enough so that it is a lot easier to comb and detangle, yet it is not bone straight. And here's a view from the back. Next, I apply Olaplex number three. This is a bond rebuilder that is safe for all hair types. Our hair is made up of millions of disulfide bonds and normal wear and tear in addition to chemicals can break these bonds down. This patented system rebuilds those bonds. I'm gonna work this in, cover with a plastic cap and let this sit for 20 to 30 minutes, then wash with the sulfate free shampoo. Mm -hmm. 
I like Care Care's Hydrating Detangling Shampoo for all my wash days. Today I'm trying something new. I'm trying the Jazz and Clear Semi-Permanent Hair Color. I'm brand new on Instagram uses this for extra shine. I've been wanting to try this anyway for a while. With brown skin and really sandy hair, sometimes it just kind of all blends in, so I'm trying to create a little more contrast. I'm going to process this with heat for 30 minutes, rinse it out, and then proceed to deep conditioning. And now for the GOAT, ORS Hair Mayo. I love, love, love this stuff. This is a protein conditioner, yet it is a good balance of both moisture and protein. I like to mix an organic oil into my conditioner. I'm using olive oil today. I don't really measure, but if I had to estimate, I'd say I'm using about a tablespoon or two. I really don't have any type of raving review about the clear coat. I think there's a little more shine and it looks a little darker in a sense. Overall, I'm pleased with the result. I like how much texture my hair has in addition to how soft it is. After conditioning, I always use a leave-in conditioner and I'm trying out some new products. I'm using the Elasta QP Olive Oil and Mango Butter Leave-In. I used to use their Olive Oil and Mango Butter Moisturizer that came in a jar. I haven't been able to find that, so part of me believes that's been discontinued because when you read the instructions on the leave-in, they try to slide in that you can use it on a daily basis. So I think it's discontinued at this point. If anyone does use it and you found it recently, can you let me know down in the comments because I would like to buy some myself. I've air dried overnight, so now I'm ready to moisturize and seal. Recently, I've become a fan of the ORS Olive Oil Moisturizing Hair Lotion. These are the same products too, by the way. This is just a smaller version. I'm gonna use that and then seal in the moisture with a grapeseed and olive oil mix. Because I have this shoot in a few days, there's no need to be fancy. I'm just gonna throw my hair into a bun. Now that I've checked hair off the list, I can complete my other prep steps. Now, we should always be drinking water, but before I shoot, I go into a water only mode. I have a couple bumps on my face and I really wanna clear those up. I just have a personal goal of wanting the photographer to do the least amount of editing in Photoshop on me as possible. I also get very serious about drinking my collagen shake every morning, which is something I should be doing anyway. Um, but collagen helps to grow your hair, but also helps to keep your face clear. Thank you. 
you should have neutral nails. You are there to help sell a product, not distract and draw attention to your nails. So this won't be something I have to rush and do at the drop of a dime for a shoot. I always have neutral nails. Ditch the hair. Unwanted hair will limit you, both in how you can pose and what you can wear. You don't want to think of a super creative pose and then you can't even do it because your pits are hairy. So yeah, ditch the hair. I'm just kind of joking around here, but you really do need to practice poses. Um, look up some real models on Instagram and see what they do and mimic that. You want to be known for walking on set and instantly delivering so that you can book more opportunities. You don't want the company to have to work so hard to have to pull your personality out of you. So have some go-to looks and angles that you know work. I low-key bring a spin the night bag on set. When I say anything can and will happen, I mean that. I've got Lysol to be COVID safe. Now this should not happen, but let's just say you had to wipe off or wash off an entire face of makeup. Do you have supplies? And again, should not happen, but let's just say the makeup artist didn't have your shade. Do you have yours on standby? They do not want you to leave. So any type of medicine you use, you need to bring that along with you. Similar to that little clip I showed in the beginning, there are people in your face all day. You don't know what they'll be serving on set. Have something to freshen your breath. And for picture's sake, bring floss. You know we have those chronically dry hot spots, so be prepared to be able to hit those elbows, knees, and ankles. Do you wear contacts? Bring your solution and an extra pair. Sometimes there's a fitting ahead of time, other times that doesn't happen. So be prepared with the appropriate undergarments. I'd suggest bringing both black and nude in addition to a strapless bra because you have no idea what you'll be wearing. Sometimes there's a real deal stylist to make things fit, sometimes there isn't. Do you have safety pins? Especially if it's from the waist up, there's not really a need to make your clothes fit you exactly. You might not like what they're serving to eat. You may have dietary restrictions. You may be like me and just like to snack. There is no leaving until you're done. So you need to bring food with you. Yep, and I bring this too because who knows. <laughs> always wear comfortable clothing. You don't need to be dolled up. Don't try to look like a model. I always bring a jacket as well. Or extra layers, it is typically pretty chilly on set. I've got my spinning night bag and she's out. If you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, save, share, and subscribe. Until next time, bye guys. Wish me luck.